Yoga STA in St. Augustine Beach, Florida. Today I'm going to break down half moon back bending and hands to feet pose. That is the first posture in the Hot 26 and 2 yoga series. Going to go over some alignments in the posture, just the breakdown of the posture, and some common modifications for the posture as well. Thanks for watching. Keeping the feet together, toes, heels touching. Contracting of the thighs, tailbone down, engage your core, the belly. So always make sure to engage your core, the space below your belly button. This is your core, you're pulling it in. That's to protect your lower spine. Relax the shoulders, inhale, arms up. Interlocking the fingers, release just your index, thumbs are crossed. Bring the arms back with your ears. Elbow down, belly in, keeping the arms with your ears. Inhale, breathing, you stretch up. Exhale, push hips to the left and bend body to the right. You want to keep your extension. And this posture, it's not just about collapsing down. We're not just collapsing down. You wanna keep your extension, keeping your thighs contracted, the muscles contracted in the body. It's about moving your spine, creating length in the spine, getting the stretch happening on the connective tissues on the side of the body. If it's difficult to keep the arms above your head, if there are shoulder issues going on, you can do this posture with your arms to the side. You can really focus on lengthening up through the head and just moving at the spine. Sometimes if just one shoulder is bothering you, you can stretch with the one side, letting the shoulder that is causing you pain relax down. You're keeping the extension in your spine. You're stretching up and you're stretching over. In this posture, keep your thighs contracted. You want your thighs contracted. You're squeezing your inner thighs in together and squeezing the thighs forward. Push your heels down, the tailbone down, and keep your core belly in. The left hip is slightly forward to keep the hip square. Scoop that right shoulder slightly forward. You want both armpits visible. Lift up through the left armpit, push the left tail down, and squeeze your palms together. Squeeze your palms, it does help. Lock out your elbows, and you're stretching your fingers up and over to help create more extension in the spine in the left side of your body. Inhale, back up to the top. Other side, getting that side view. Take an inhale breath and stretch straight up. Belly in, tailbone is down. Push hips out and move to the left. So again, tailbone down, thighs contracted, arms back with ears, keeping the spine in alignment. Common misalignment here is to kind of let that tilt happen at the hips. You want to keep that tailbone down. So that the spine is straight, you're getting engaging your core. So if common to not engage all that, it kind of looks like this. So you're not having that lower spine down, everything your core is not engaged, you're not protecting and supporting that lower spine. So instead, think tailbone down, pull in core belly, keeping the spine straight and keeping that tailbone down. You're squeezing the thighs together, pulling in the core of the belly, engaging that core engaging your muscles as you push the hips out, keeping the spine aligned as you breathe. Inhale out. A back view. You're lengthening up and then lengthening over. So think extension up and extension over. Weight to the heels, tailbone down. Squeeze your palms and you stay breathing, keeping that chin up. Squeeze palms. Legs are contracting and straight. Arms are contracted and straight. From that half moon shape, we go right into the half moon back bend. Keeping your arms up. Now again, if your arms are fatiguing and you need to let them drop down, you can. If you have shoulder pain, there's neck pain, there are modifications to the back bend. You can have your hands here when you do the back bend, just focusing the eye gaze up and back. Again, there's always modifications for these shapes to help you do your postures and still get the maximum therapeutic benefits for you. Traditionally, in that back bend, your arms are up over your head. You inhale, look up and look back. So we're not just dropping back. You wanna extend up and then extend back. Squeezing palms, wrist elbows straight, and you're sliding the fingers back, keeping the chest lifted, 
pushing the heels down, pushing the hips forward. So you're creating this back bend from upper spine, middle spine, and lower spine. Stay with your breath and soften your jaw. The neck hurts. You can still do the arm stretch, do the arm stretch up, but then just look up without moving the head back. You can also then focus on moving just your arms back, getting more shoulder opening without letting the head drop back. Again, letting the arms drop if you need, looking up and looking in. Keeping the feet together and instead, again, you're extending up and then extending up. If you're looking up, looking back, stretching up, stretching back. So make sure you're stretching straight up and back. We're not going into this posture here and just folding out that lower spine. You can see how that's creating just that constriction, just some compression there, that lower spine. I think we want to lengthen out of this, help to relieve lower back pressure, lower back pain. So we're going to extend out of that lower spine, extending up and hold it. Inhale up. Stretching up, stretching up, and stretching back. So you really want to focus that total back bend. Really focus that upper spine that's hard to get to because your rib cage is there. So you're stretching up and stretching over. Stay with your breath. From that back bending pose, we go into hands to feet pose. With your hands to feet pose, you're stretching up, pulling your belly, and begin to hinge at your hips with a straight back, with that straight spine. If you need, there's lower back pressure, if the hamstrings are really tight, you can bend your knees and pull forward so that you're still coming down with that flat back. And from the floor, the knees and the hips, you can walk your hips out, right left, right left, or lean up the body. Moving into the shape, you want to focus on keeping the spine straight. You can bend knees as much as you need so you keep this upper lower body connection. You're pushing the upper body against the lower body. If you're able, you're going for the heel grip. Your fingers cupping underneath your heels. If you're unable to go for this heel grip, you can grip outside the feet to pull yourself down. You can also grip the back of your calves, back of your calves here if you need to pull this back down. If it hurts to have so much pressure of your belly on there, if you need, you can have feet separated slightly so that the belly can partially have space to go in between your leg. And as well, you can use your hands to pull up the calves, pull up by the feet, but eventually working to grip behind the heels. Letting your head relax. Just like we go into the posture, if you need knees bent, you can keep the knees bent coming out of the posture as well so that you come out with that straight spine. Again, if you're able, keep the legs straight, belly in, always belly core in. You keep this core engaged to support the spine. So common, people want to round the spine to come down. Without using the core engagement spine straight, it may look kind of like this, coming down, without straight spine, lengthening, belly engaged. Also, often, students may want to round the spine to focus on getting legs up. If you have some issues in the back, it's better to, if you can, and you want the leg stretch, have the leg straight, but you can place your hands on the shin and focus on a straight spine. So you're still lengthening the spine, lengthening the back of the legs and focusing your breath. You can also bend your knees to have the knees, <clears throat> the belly inside the chest against the knees, but still that straight spine. As you start to work on the pull to lift your hips up, creating that opening over time. Knees bent if you need, belly in, come up flat back. Inhale. Stretch out, belly in, you're coming down. Flat back, come up straight if you can. Going for that heel grip if you're able. Wrapping your elbows close. And when you pull, think extension. So try to let your head relax. Instead of having that head lifted, think your spine's lengthening all the way to the neck. So you let the head relax. 
Try to bring that face closer to the shins. Maybe one day your nose can lift from the shins and think crown of your head down. You can use that pole to help with that traction. Gently pushing the knees back, sticking your tailbone up, pushing the upper body against lower body as you pull on the heels and push the toes down, creating that lengthening in your spine as you breathe. Shoulders away from yours. Watch their shoulders from wanting to stretch to yours. Think of lengthening, let those shoulders go away, elbows close, and breathe. Wrapping arms out, palms together. Plant the belly in. Again, watch from as you come up, round. We don't want to round out. Instead, you want straight spine, belly in, stretching out, lengthening your spine, coming up with control. Arms down. Breathe. And out through your nose. Thank you for watching. I hope that helps. If you have any more questions, comments, please let me know. Please like, share, subscribe the video, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Namaste.